Hallelujah. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. Once again, we are here gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that the Spirit of God will open the Word of God to us, grant us utterance, and bring everyone into a place of transformation, we ask you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everyone into a place of transformation. Lord, thank you for calling us to a deeper place. Thank you for calling us into a deeper place spiritually. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, and the Spirit said, come up thither. Lord, and that's where we are. That's where we are. You're calling us to calling us to a deeper place. And Lord, we're responding with our soul, with our spirit, our body. We're responding, oh God. We give you the praise and glory today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say hello to someone on your right and your left and welcome them to church. Find out what their name is. Find out what their name is. Welcome them to church. Glory and glory and glory and glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So if you want a title for the message, this month the theme of our message is how to become a strong Christian. How to become what? A strong Christian. That's the theme of our message. Well, it's a series on Christian consecration. How to become a strong Christian. It's a great thing when you come to church and you have a Bible and something to write so that you can go back and like the Berean Christian confirm the things that are taught how to become a strong christian so you know just in my just in my in my experience of christianity there are different kind of christians there are christians that um and, and you can tell the level of someone's christianity in the way they pray you can tell the level of someone's christianity that they pray if you see a christian that all his prayer is focused on lord forgive me or lord give me something you can tell that the christian is at a that christian is at a spiritual state and needs to grow when you grow spiritually your prayer moves like your prayer moves from lord give me and forgive me because you understand that the purpose of prayer is not to collect something from god the purpose of prayer is to fellowship with god that's the purpose of prayer to fellowship with god and that's why have you noticed something most christians as soon as they become richer their prayer life start going down and the reason why their prayer life start going down is because fundamentally the narrative of what they've been taught is that you pray because you need something they've not thought them that god is your father you pray because you spend time with your father you pray because you spend time with your father so I want to ask you a question, when you have the job that you want, when you have the marriage that you want, when you have the car that you want, when you have the finance that you want, what do you get again to pray about? What you get to pray about, there's just something when you understand prayer, that prayer is not about things, it's about fellowship, that I can just stay in His presence, oh glory to God, I can just stay in His presence and enjoy Him, and I can just be lost there. The Bible says that that was the experience of Peter, what was the experience of Peter? Peter was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus Christ, the Bible says by the time they were done, Peter said, sir, let's not go anywhere else. Let's stay here. The reason why is that they had seen the glory. They had seen the glory. They had seen the glory. They had seen the glory of God. They had seen the glory of God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Second Chron Chron Chronicles chapter 30 from verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 30 verse 1. So we're talking about consecration. The Bible says this, And Ezekiel sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. So Israel had several feasts they used to keep. They had seven feasts they used to keep. They had the feast of Passover. They had the feast of what? They had, they had um, the Pentecost. They had, they had gatherings. They had the first fruit. They had seven feasts they used to keep. So, and those feasts was very, 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 those feasts was very, very instrument, was very significant. So the Bible says in verse 2, the Bible says in verse 2, let's keep going. And the king had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. Verse 3, the Bible says, so they had said they will keep the Passover in the second month. Why? For they could not keep it, they could not keep it at that time 
because the priests, and take note of this, he said, for the priests had not sanctified themselves. Now, this I didn't emphasize in the previous service, but I want to emphasize it here. The Bible says, not that the priests had not sanctified themselves. The Bible says, the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently. That's amazing. He said, the priest, he said, the priest had, con so another word for sanctification is consecrated. So it, it says, but not that the priest had not sanctified themselves, not that the priest had not consecrated themselves, but they had not done it, what? Sufficiently. And because of that, this whole blessing of the Passover was suspended. What, what, why is consecration powerful? What is consecration? This, this is where I will start with this. Your consecration would determine the depth of your spiritual experiences. You know what? God was trying to do a lot for them through the Passover. But because the priests were not sanctified, were not consecrated, they couldn't do it. Your consecration would determine the depth depth of your spiritual experiences you will not be able to go farther than your consecration in the things of god there are levels to these things and i'll give an example when you go to the supermarket i mean you go to the supermarket and you have an idea of what you want to buy yes or no no talk to me yes or no exactly you go to the supermarket you have an idea of what you want to buy but most of the time you don't end up buying everything you plan to buy yes or no why because of cash, yes or no? Because of cash, you don't buy what you want to buy. So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is that because of cash, you don't get to buy what you want to buy. Because what you buy is limited by cash. The same thing. In the realm of the spirit, the depth of your spiritual... See, in the realm of the spirit, spiritual experiences are inexhaustible. But the depth of your spiritual experience is limited by your consecration. You will not go farther than the spiritual price you are willing to pay. So in the realm of the spirit, there are dimensions, there are depth, there are dimensions, there are depth, there are, there are things that God wants to do in your life. But how far you go will depend on you. Consecration is very powerful. Consecration is very powerful. So, and let me say this, let, let me also say this here. It's dangerous to be blessed beyond the level of consecration. It's dangerous what? To be blessed beyond what? Your level of consecration. The reason why is that every blessing comes as a weight. If you are not sanctified, if you are not consecrated, what God used to bless you can destroy you. So what God does is that before he blesses you, he builds you for the blessing. He literally builds you up for the blessing. He, he doesn't want to be like a prodigal son that got stuff and took off. But that's what happens to some Christians. As soon as they become a commissioner, they lose their Christian life. As soon as they become a government, they lose their Christian life. As soon as they buy a car, an Honda Accord, as soon as they buy a Toyota, they lose their Christian life. As soon as they fall in love for this boyfriend they've been praying for, they lose their Christian life. As soon as they, you know, as soon as they do that, they lose their Christian life. And the reason why is that it's almost as if the blessing took them away from God. So it's dangerous for you to be blessed beyond your level of consecration. When you didn't have your hand, when you didn't have a flat of your own, no girl was sleeping over. Now you have a flat of your own every weekend. If it's not Shinene, then it's what Latasha. If it's not Chantel, it's Shaniqua. You know, it's everywhere because and now you have it on your own. When you didn't have a car, you used to pray a lot more. But now that you have a car. Your prayer life has gone with a car. If you are not in union like you are in Yabatek, if you are not, you are just going from one hostel to the other hostel, looking for how to see people. What is wrong with you? It's a blessing, not a curse. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. You run your, you run your own business. All the girls in the office, you are running after all the girls in the skirts. Everybody knows the way to get a promotion from the favor is to kiss, is to do something with the boss. But when you didn't have a business, you were always fasting and praying. And what has happened to you is that the level of the blessing is beyond your consecration. We need Christians that no matter amount of money they make, nothing changes them. 
That's consecration. That nothing changes me. Okay, a girl comes up to you and be like, a girl sends you nude and be like, I want you over. He said, This is what you can get tomorrow when I come over. And you be like, Hello, lady. I don't know what you think I am, but I'm actually a true child of God. You know, I love you so much to tell you that I will not do this with you. I respect you so much, I will block you after this message. God bless you. And I block you in Jesus' name. That's consecration. That's consecration. That's consecration. Consecration. That's consecration. You know, consecration will determine how deep you go. Because consecration tells you what to say no to. Tells you what to say yes to. And we need to be careful of modern Christianity. That everything is, hey, 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 hey. See, there's fun in Christianity, but there's also cross in Christianity. And the same way we enjoy Christ, we must learn to carry our cross. In Christianity, if you have not suffered for Christ, it's not complete. Glory to God. I said glory. Don't let modern theologians talk you to hellfire. Oh. Do anything, do anything. You will so go with them and join them in here. Glory to God. Look at the consecration. Luke chapter 22 verse 42. What does consecration look like? Because it's a big word. It's a big word. What does consecration look like? Luke 22 verse 42. Oh, someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at what it is. The Bible says this. And say in fact, this is Jesus Christ praying. This is the language of consecration. And say in fact that if it be your will, remove this cup from me. It says, I don't think I can do this. But see what it says. I don't think I want to do this. It says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Consecration is saying, Lord, it's not my will. It's your will being done. Give me the passion translation. Consecration is not my will. You wake up in the morning and you don't feel like praying. You remind yourself, not my will, yours be done. Glory to God. Not my will, yours be done. You, you, you take your phone and want to read the Bible and instantly, instant block comes up. You say, not my will, but yours be done. That's consecration. That's consecration. Saying, not my my will but yours be torn see what the bible says in the in the tpt translation he said father if you're willing to take this cup of agony from me if you're willing take this cup of agony from me away from me but no matter what your will must be mine this is what Jesus was saying jesus said this is the life i wanted to live where your will is submerged in my will have you not seen christians that want to get a child and now they want a baby. All of a sudden, they start visiting native doctors. And there's a new philosophy. Heaven helps those that help themselves. Written by Judas chapter, Judas is character chapter 4 verse 10. Because that's not in the Bible. So you hear things like, uh, you can see native doctor, as fast as you're not destroying somebody's own, this is just for your own. Oh. You are a single girl. All of a sudden, mama comes around, mommy comes around, and she brings you red soap, and brings you purple soap, and brings you purple is it is, it, is this your husband issue? I'm only trying to help you, and gives you water to take your bath, and gives you salt, and gives you candle. All of a sudden, born again Christian, no, you're now using red soap to bath, and if we see, you look like masquerade. Consecration is that... I know, I know that I need to get married. I don't know why it's taking some time. I'm praying about it, but I'm not going to jump ahead of God's will. The reason why is that if you get this spirit, you will get into trouble. Oh my God. Listen and listen well. Be careful. Be careful. If be careful of desperation. What people that desperate always end up with wounds. People that desperate always get into trouble because they will end up doing things that they will regret. They will end up doing things that they will not like. And the reason why is that they're just desperate. And guess what? Most of the time when they do it, they don't even get the result they wanted. And when they get the result, it comes at a cost bigger than what they could pay. Desperation. Not my will. Yours be done. Not my will. Yours be done. You wake up on a Sunday morning and you don't feel like going to church. You tell yourself, not my will. Yours be done. 
You don't feel like praying. You tell yourself, not my will, yours be done. This is the money you should be giving to us, your tithe and your offering. All of a sudden, there's a new, there's a new snake skin bag by a certain designer. You say, you know, it's, um, it's, there's a new bag now. Do it. What? Birkins. Birkins. This is it's a new Birkins bag that we need to buy the Birkins bag. He said, but that money is for, to help the poor. That money is meant to be something for the kingdom of God. He said, not my will, yours be done. And you need to remember that. That not my will. It's not my will. It's yours be done. It's not my will. It's yours be done. It's not my will. It's a, what is consecration? Let me give you some example of the consecration. What consecration is? Let, let me give another example. Consecration will make following God. See, consecration will make you following follow God when it is not easy. Act chapter twenty one verse thirteen. And let's do the story of Paul. Act twenty one verse thirteen. The story of Paul. Consecration will make you follow God when it's difficult. The Bible says, and Paul answered and said, what do you mean to break my heart? Because they are told him that if you go to Jerusalem, you will, you will go to prison. You will literally die. And Paul says, why are, you, why are all of you crying? Why are all of you crying? What do you mean to break my heart? For I'm ready to be bound. No, sorry. For I'm ready not only to be bound only, but to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The question is that, when will you begin to carry a cross? When will you begin to say things like, this is what I did that was inconvenient for me, for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? There's some of you here, in your entire adult life, you have not fasted before. And you keep saying that, I love Jesus. No, sir, you love food. Consecration. And the reason why is that it's difficult to fast, but I can consecrate my food. Consecration. He said, not my will, but yours be done. Paul says that, hey, you're talking about, he said, you're talking about me going to prison. He said, I've made up my mind. If this thing leads to death, that's it. If this thing leads to death, that's it. When did you become the kind of Christian that in a year you go to church four times? And your, your reason is that you're busy. You say there's online church. I want to ask you something. I know there's online church, but the Bible says we should gather together, not online, on site. I want to ask you a question. When last did you when last did you pray and you felt a breakthrough in your spirit? You prayed and you know something happened within your soul. You know God touched you. Like 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 you know God touched you. And I said, No, I'm a man, I'm not emotional. But when you watch Man U and watch Real Madrid and watch Chelsea and all the teams are losing matches, you keep shouting. But when it comes to the things of God, you don't have passion. Not my will, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. It's not about me, it's about you, oh God. Praise God. Consecration will make you more useful to God. Consecration will make you what? more useful to God. Let, let, me, let, let me give some, let me just give some examples. I don't know who I can call on here to come. You come, come, yeah. Come, yeah, yeah. The guy, not the guy, not the lady, yeah. Come. There's a lady in front of you with glasses. Let her come also, yeah. Yeah, come, come. Are you new? If you're new in church, you can sit down, but if you're not new, you can come. Are you new? Yeah. The two of you can come together. Two of you are wearing pinks. That, that's nice. Pink, pink. Consecration makes you more useful to God. Consecration makes you what? More useful to God. Guess what? Everybody look here. Look here. Look here. The more God uses you, the more you become full of use. It's called useful. When you become full of use, you are called what? Useful. The less God uses you, what do you become? You become useless. So the question now, what are you? Are you full of use or you are useless? Watch what consecration does. And this is why God uses people useful and useless. You know, just take turn after the word, after each other, take one cup and drink. Just drink a sip. It's non-alcoholic. Take no, just one after the other. One after. You can take 
you can use the same cup he used. So you can use what? I said, take a cup. So why are you telling me? Is that another cup there? Take another cup. Ah. Just a little, sir. Don't be drunk. Ah. Because, <laughs> bro, you used to. <laughs> ah. The way you just fought, ah, you must have to well, well, oh. <laughs> Have you noticed you need the angle? <laughs> okay, drink, 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 drink. Finish it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I know you want to be humble. Finish it. Put it back. Put it back. Take any of the cups and also drink. Take any of the cups and also drink. You don't even know how to drink at all. Say so you have four in it. You didn't know. Two of you, I want to ask you a question. But there are two glass cups here. Take the microphone. There are two glass cups here. Why did you use to use the one he had used? You literally kissed him through the glass. Why didn't you just take the other glass cup? Why, 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 why didn't you choose? There are two glass cups. Why are you using the same glass cup? Yes, sir. Because the other one is dirty. Because the other one is dirty. Okay, give it to her. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because the other one is dirty. Oh, wow. Could it be that when you are dirty, God can't use you? I know you are praying that Lord send the power out of my life. Lord use me in the marketplace. Do something in me. And God is saying I can't clean you for you. You must clean yourself. So when the angels come and say let's pick someone that will shake oil and gas it picks king glass. When the angels say let's pick someone that will heal the sick it picks king glass. The Bible says if any man will sanctify himself he will be a vessel unto honor for superior use. It's time for you to be a vessel unto honor. But what consecration does is that consecration helps you to keep your glass clean. Praise God. Thank you. Consecration helps you to keep your glass clean. That's what consecration does. Many of you are here and you know there's a lot going on but consecration helps you to keep your glass clean. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. What is consecration? First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. Can you change that sound a little? Thank you. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. What is consecration? Not my will, but yours be done. Listen to me. Can, can, we, can, we, just, can we just talk? You can't be coming to church of God and hear the word of God and it doesn't show in your life. No, it doesn't work that way. You can't be coming to church as a single guy and you come to church and there are five girls you are toasting in church. No, you can't be dating Shade Shane Victoria. No, 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 no. No. You can't be coming to church and we cannot loan you money and you repay back. Consecration. The more you hear the word of God, the more the word of God changes you. Or else, what we will have is religion. People that know so much or don't do so much. What you need is people that can do what is being said. I'm not speaking about perfectionism because even I'm not perfect. But everybody's on a journey progressing towards that place of consecration. We're saying that not my will, but yours be done. Why must you deny Christ when your friends are there? As long as, you know, by yourself you are great. You know, but once your friends are there and you guys are eating, you are smoking, drinking and all of those things, they ask you, you don't do all of that. Though. So, do you, how far? Do you do shisha? All of a sudden, you know, Shininkwa goes, oh yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and meanwhile, she doesn't even know what shisha does. Like, hey, give me. <laughs> you know, and the reason why she's doing that is because she just can't say no. Don't stay around people that makes God and Christianity old school and you have to sin to be cool with them. There's nothing cool about sin. That's the problem I have with people. You spend your own money in club, you buy champagne, you spend your own money carrying bodies, you spend your own money doing all of these things. I spend my own money, give to Jesus Christ, you complain I'm stupid. When you spend your money, do I complain? Everybody focus on your focus. Everybody knows what pays them. Consecration. 
See what the Bible says. And this is the basis of our consecration. This is the basis of our consecration. See, you can't be coming to church because you're trying to get a girl. Mm -mm, you come to church for God. You can't come to church because your wife says you must go to church. You come to church for God. It's something, it's something you willingly do by yourself. It's something you train yourself to do. Can I have a, I have a confession? I wish I could tell you that every day I feel like praying. No, I don't. I wish I could tell you that every day I feel like reading my Bible. No, I don't. But every time I do it, it's because I compel myself to do it. Sometimes I'm so tired on my bed to get up, I will just shout, Hey! <laughs> One time my wife said, what happened? I said, no, I was just waking my body up. Because my body just was lie on the bed and lie on the bed. I said, no, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. The reason why is I watch this now. Can I, can I give you this? The first thing Satan takes from a man he wants to destroy is his prayer life. The second thing, if Satan now wants to finish the man, he has taken the prayer life. When he takes your prayer life, things will be going smoothly. You know why? If things are going smoothly, you will not see the need for prayer. So you are heading for fast-paced destruction. But the moment it takes your prayer life, if things go bad, ah, then you will return. So if you have stopped praying and things are going smoothly, be careful. Because that means you are on a fast pace. By the time it deals with you, there will be nothing left. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. Consecration. Consecration. Glory to God. Oh yeah? See what it says. It says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you? which you have of God and you are not what? You are not what? You are not what? Let, 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 tell her to come. Please come. Yeah, come. Bring your phone with you. Look at him and say, you are not your own. Yeah, you are not your own. Oh, wow. Both of us have iPhones, right? Great. This one even has like colors, things on it. If I say you hold my iPhone, if I say hold my iPhone for me, by tomorrow, if I come and take it back from you, will you have changed anything on my iPhone? Will you have changed anything on my iPhone? No. Why won't you change something? Because it's not mine. You just told me to hold it. Because it's not mine. I want to ask you, if you are not yours, why do you live your life according to yourself? Who gave you the right to change things in your life? She said, it's not mine. If you are not yours, who gives you the right? He says, he says, you are not your own. See, you have your life, but it's not your own. You've been bought with a price. The way I dress must reflect who bought me. The way I talk must reflect who bought me. You know, listen, Christianity is now so degenerated. You have Christians, even pastors that use the F word. It's amazing. Like, it's ridiculous. So just F word. Like, there's not like swear word again. Like, it's just okay. The F word. Your tongue is not your own. Speak right words. Look at the next verse. Verse 20. Verse 20. Thank you. Look at him and say, I'm not my own. I belong to him. Look at verse 20. Let's just look together. I want to go. It says, for you are what? For you are bought with a price. It says, therefore, because you realize that you're not your own, you are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He says, hey, in case you didn't get the memo, you are God's property. So when you wake up in the morning and say, um, I, I, you know, um, you know um, um, I, I just don't want to feel like going to church. It's not about you. It's who owns you. Oh, I, I don't feel like doing midweek. It's not about you. It's who owns you. You can't be popular in Queen Ox and not be known in the kingdom of God. There's who and who in the kingdom of God. Are you there? The demon said, Paul, I know. Peter, I know. Can they say they know you? But they know you on the other side. You are the one that buys table. You are the one that organizes things. Can't God use you the same way? When you were not born again, Satan already used you. He did. You are the one that will organize, you know, when all the chairmen are coming, you organize for all the chairmen. 
You organize the thing in the office. You are the one that pair people up. You are the one that, when you want to collect bribe and do this and that, you are the one that they will go through. You are the one that has scam accounts. You move the money to West Fargo, bring it back to Nigeria, move it to China. But now you are born again. Can God use it that way? You now become an introvert. Say, mm -hmm. Sir, let God use you. He says, you're not your own. How many of you beautiful ladies here need to be ushers and greeters? I'm shy. But if this to give you money, you will not be shy. How many of you men here, God has blessed you in business. Women here, blessed you in business. You can take three, ten people, lead a business cell and mentor them every week. You say, I don't have time. You don't have time. But other things you have time for. You're not your own. When last did you wake up at night and just said, I just want to give one hour to God in worship and say, look at me, I'm 50 years old. See, my children are not sick. My wife is not sick. My husband is not sick. Things are going well. He has done so much for me. You break down on your knees and worship him because I know it's not me. When last, I want to ask you a question. When last did God say you give a seed, talk to you about your titan and you responded? Or you always say, next month next week, next month. That money is not your own. He says, you are bought with a price. Can I shock you now? One last to talk to someone about Jesus Christ. On the plane. In the office. At home. One last to invite someone and say, follow me to church. And the reason I'm saying so is that there's a generation that this is not what they love to hear. But this is what is essential for this season because one day we can be in church like this and the trumpet will sound and all of a sudden you look to your right and you say i thought you were a leader in church others have gone where are you one day we will gather like this and it will be the last gathering and all of a sudden the trumpet will sound the bible says and they which are life in Christ will be caught up in the air. Will you be there? He says, you're bought with a price. You can't keep saying that. This is what I love to wear. You are born again now. There are some things you should not wear. Uh-uh. Your fashion is now a fashion against us. When the Bible says no weapon is fashioned against you, some people, some people when they dress, it's their fashion is fashioned against us because you, you, you're trying to pray. You're like, oh Jesus, just in your sight, you're like, oh Lord, have mercy, man, galagama, langa, gaga, gaya, and let's say, turn to your neighbor, she just feels so bad. Hey, neighbor, say, oh Jesus. I say, yeah, you know, uh, but the thing with me is that, you know, we serve a God that is spirit. God is spirit. All this thing about clothes doesn't affect them. I know it doesn't affect God, but it affects your brother and sister. Be considerate. This thing you live here, this thing we live here, we can see everything. Consider us. I, I know that consider us because once we see it, we are not the same. Ah! The pants will be so tight. You will see this. You will see the, the, you will see the pants shape like this. Even, even if the person has line, you'll be seeing the line like this. Consider us. Not all men have faith. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. And that's what I like. Not my will, but your speed. There were things I used to like before. Ah, I used to like pink, pink things. Mini, micro, mini. I'm now born again. Not my will, your speed. Brothers, when girls come to you for help, it's not the opportunity to invite them to a hotel. Help like Christ. Do it unto the Lord. Don't say, yes, I can support you. You have some ideas. I can support you. Um, okay, I will, I will send you a message. Next message. Let's meet on Friday night. Um, Elliot Hotel, room 202. Now text back. Now say, brother, this. Why are we missing an hotel? Are you a small child? You don't know what I'm talking about. Stop behaving naive. Ah. Uh -uh. Stop giving that. If you want, you want. If you don't want, you don't want. Why can't you help us unto the Lord? Why must you help and see pants? 
Why must you help and see pants? If you don't see bra, you can't help. What did Jesus Christ, is that how Jesus Christ loved us? Glory to God. I said glory to God. He says you are bought with a price. So, so I belong to God. This is the way I think. This is the way I think. Oh, wow. Let, let me give you, see, see, all the protocol members come up. I, I did this before. I'll do it again. Dude, come up. Come up. So, what is my consecration? Number one, I'm not my own. I'm not my own. All the protocol come up. You know, when you see this protocol officers, some of them are senior bank executives, investment bankers, run their own companies, senior administrators, very successful guys. In fact, I posted one yesterday's picture and the whole of my, you know, I've gotten messages from Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, everywhere in the world. Like, listen to me, by the time I auction these guys, I'll be so rich. Praise God. I'll be so rich. People even tell me that my daughter, people are even asking for their children. I'm like, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, and this guy's so successful, so handsome, cool people. See how they're all standing, all of them like that. And hold on, hold on. But that's what I'm going to. But they will leave all of their work and come to church and behave like houseboy. What are they doing? Carrying pulpits, carrying table, carrying pulpit. Uh, let me ask, uh, let me ask them a question. Carrying pulpit, carrying table. You, how long are you in church for on Sundays? Uh, eight hours average. When do you get here? 7 a.m. or 6.30. 6 30. When do you leave sometimes? 4 o'clock. Sorry, do you have a job? Sure. You have a job? You even have a business? Yes. You know, you have all of those things. A lot is going on in your life. You have family, all those other things are there. But it doesn't matter what I have. Not my will. Yours be done. But you, you're too busy for God. But yet you stay on the phone with a girl that is not your wife. It's not that you're busy. Your parties are in the wrong places. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back to your seat. <laughs> Glory to God. So th what is consecration? Number one. Consecration, I want to define it to you. Number one, I'm not my own. I'm not my own. So because I'm not my own, I can't live onto myself. I can't just I can't just say I'm migrating to Canada. It doesn't work that way. I'm not my own. And that migration is to be in the will of God. Listen to me. Hey, I can't keep giving excuses why I'm dating people I should not be dating. I'm not my own. I can't keep giving excuses why I should be doing the wrong thing. I'm not my own. The second thing is this. The second thing is this. I'm not just not my own. I am set aside for a unique purpose. I am set aside for what? For a unique purpose. I don't know about you, but in my house, there's something that we do. There's one glass in my house. And my kids will tell you, that's daddy's glass. Did you ever have that experience when you were growing up? That's daddy's glass. Hope you know that glass, most of the time, it doesn't look special. It could, it could be old. But the reason why that glass is different is because it's devoted to daddy. So when you carry that glass, there's a way you must carry it. That this glass cannot break. Even when you're washing cups, you can wash cup anyhow. This one you must slow down. Because it's that this glass. That's what it means to sanctify or consecrate something. To set it aside. You have been set aside to God. Someone should not be touching you like that. <laughs> Praise God. You have been set aside to God. Huh? You can be watching triple X, double X, all these videos where they are fighting Chinese all over themselves. You can be watching that. You have been doing pornography. No, you have been set aside to God. You need to start thinking that way that I have been set aside to God. There's value on me. I'm daddy's glass. Praise God. I'm Jehovah's glass. I'm daddy's glass. I'm Jehovah's glass. There's some places I cannot go because I'm Jehovah's glass. I'm daddy's property. I'm, I've been set aside. There are conversations I can't be with. You know, I can't be in the office where all of this oil and gas people or all of these telecommunication boys or all of these politicians are talking about all of their extra roller coaster. And I'm like, ah, he <laughs> said, that one, if I finish up on the weekend, that one I did 44. No, 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 no. I don't laugh at that jokes praise god i'm not my own <laughs> praise, god. 
Praise God. The proof of consecration is a loss of authority. When I'm consecrated, that lady, if I give her my phone right now, I've lost my authority. Once I gave myself over to God, I've lost authority over me. It's not about me again. It's not. It's not about me again. Someone says, someone says, you know, and maybe I will end this story. When I was going to become a pastor, that was one of the most difficult decisions in my life. And, and the reason why is, as you know, some of you come from families where, like, your parents encourage you spiritually. My parents were not like that. My dad was the, was the most spiritual one. My mom was very economical in our approach to life. So, eventually, you know, I got a job. My mother noticed because I got a job through someone she knew, but I was not following up on the job. I didn't resume to the bank, you know, and I was at home. So my mother and I came on and said, what exactly is your problem? People are trying to get a job. You get a job. You're not resuming and all of those kind of things. And I just said, eventually I could not hide it again. And I said, mom, the Lord has called me to ministry. Before I could even get there, it took me six months for me to convince God why I should not be a pastor. I told him that, Lord, I'm not... Pa I told him all the things why I should not be a pastor. I said, okay, let me go and be a pastor in some other churches. I mentioned churches to him. Send me to Daystar. Said, I was just mentioning churches. I said, I'll go and walk there. You know, but why do you want to come start the church? There are too many churches in the world. I, I just had all these excuses. And God said, this is what I wanted to do. I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. Because my mind was that, ah, I was going to become a businessman and fund the gospel like crazy. That's what they always say. That's what they always say. And they're here saying so. Only that they have never done it before. And God says, I don't want you to, I don't want to just fund the gospel. I want you to be in the gospel. When I told my mom, I'm called to the ministry, my mom looked at me eyeball to eyeball. My mom looked at me and said, I regretted having you as a child. He said, if I knew this, what you would turn out, I'll have had an abortion. He said, I knew you'll have had an abortion. She said, I will take you off my will. You think you're going to leave off my property? No! You will not leave anything. I will strip you of every single thing. I looked at my mom in the face. As a, I was 22 or there about. And I told my mom, I said, you will not need to do that because give me seven days, I will leave this house. I'll pack my things and leave this house. I didn't even pack anything. I just took a few clothes I did and I began to scotch with someone. When I did that, it didn't make sense. My support system was gone. I had nothing to fall back on. I just said, Lord, everything I have, I've put on the line. Not because I ever want to do this, but not my will. And tears were coming down my eyes. I remember everything. I remember everything. I remember that my aunt was there and my, mom, my aunt was trying to calm down my mom. My mom couldn't be calm and my mom began to curse and rage. And you must understand, it's not as my mother hated the gospel. My mother just thought that this was the way to poverty. And my mom had come out of extreme poverty. My mom grew in a church where the pastor would suck up to her to collect money. So my mom says, Bolaji, ah! He said, hey! And my mom's name is Dupe. He said, ah, no, my child, no, my child, my child. Ah! You'll be preaching money to get money from people. You'll be terrorizing with them with Bible. Ah! He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, no, my child, no, my child, my child. He said, you'll be using Bible to be slapping them to collect their money. He, he said, like, like our Alagba. That's what she said. My mom is passed on now. But before she passed on, one day she came to my house to see my family. And she said, and I was talking to her about just things of God and I wanted her to improve on a prayer life, a giving life, you know, because my mom was that kind of person, like, you know, she, does, she never used to tithe, you know, and she would just say something like, I give my church this amount. I said, but that's not your tithe. I said, you need to do it. <laughs> you know, we're having a big argument. And she stopped and said, I've never agreed with you on this, but maybe that's why amongst all your siblings, your life is the smoothest. He said, you had it easy from beginning to the end. I raised you up the all the same way. I didn't even give you attention because of this way you went. But your life turned out. Most of you will never know my family if not for me today. The reason why is that if you choose to trust God's will, 
you will discover the best is in God's will. The only problem is that most of you, you've never gotten to that point where you're like, God, I take a step and I trust you. That's the problem. And you know why? Why I can do dangerous things? Listen, I've given out like, I gave out, I've given out several cars in my life. There are times I had no car. I had one car and I gave out the one car. And I've done that a couple of times. Three, four, five times I've given out cars. I mean, I was given a brand new car. Toyota Prado, brand new, tear rubber. A few months after I gave to somebody else. And the reason why I've been able to take steps is this. The first reason is this. Number one, I always know that it's not about me. Then number two, because I've done it and I thought I would die, but I didn't die. I've learned to trust him when he makes demand unreasonable. Can I say this to you? Like the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they say, oh king, we will not bow. The king say, you will burn. Guess what? All the people around the fire that bowed, they bought the fire. The one that did not bow, did not burn. This is what I will tell you. If you don't bow, you will not burn. And today, it's your call. It's your call to say, Lord, I'm going to take my prayer life serious. I'm going to take my Bible study serious. This thing I don't even come on media service, I'll take it serious. I'm going to find a cell to join. I'm going to find it. Look at those protocols. Look at all those very handsome guys. And before you can join the protocol, you go to like six months of intense trading. We send it to do security first and stay in the rain and in the sun so that we can kill big manism in you. So that you don't think that you say, oh yeah, senior manager in Zenith Bank has come to come and serve in protocol. No, no, we say go and start with security. Go and serve with Boy Scouts. So people like your, your junior at work will be insulting you. Can't you see I want to pack? Let me pack here. Let me pack here. That's how you talk to them. Let me pack here. And the guy is looking at you. You know I can buy you, right? <laughs> but in that process, this is what consecration does. You learn patience. Through suffering, you are made perfect. Some things you're going through is because God is training and keeping you. Don't jump the lesson. Slow down and go through the lesson. Not my will, but yours be done. Let's pray.